Swood is a fully integrated gold partner product for SolidWorks aimed at furniture designers. Swood Design is used to significantly reduce design times for furniture projects and allows you to create reports and documentation for the workshop. Swood Cam allows the creation of your Cam programs. We begin in Swood Design. As you can see, it's fully integrated into the task pane of SolidWorks and consists of various tabs. The first tab, Frames Library, allows us to choose from configurable, simple or more complex frames that act as a starting point of our design. We can choose a frame from some default examples or create our own. The second tab, Swood Box, allows you to choose typical features or components that you wish to add to your design, such as doors, drawer units, feet and so on. To use these, it's just a case of dragging and dropping them into your design. Again, you are provided with default examples as well as having the ability to create your own. The third tab, Swood Panels Library, allows us to choose from a library of classic panels or special panels that you may wish to use in your design. The Edge Bands Library tab allows us to choose from a library of edge band styles that we wish to use in our design. Again, it's simply a case of dragging and dropping these onto our panel. The Profile in Library tab allows us to choose from a range of profiles that we can drag and drop onto our panels. Again, these are fully customizable. The Connectors Library tab gives us access to a hardware library from major suppliers, where we can drag and drop various connector types into our design. This will give us the option to place the hardware, but also cut the holes into our design to house the hardware too. Finally, the Materials Library gives us access to various materials that we may wish to use. So these could be standard panels of various sizes and materials, laminated panels and so on. Now to see an example of Swood in action. We begin by creating a new Swood frame. Let's save it to our frames library as Frame Mitre. The edit frame command allows us to modify the width, height and depth dimensions of the frame. Now to add some panels. We switch to the panel library and add in the mitered panel. This has been set up to have the edges mitered automatically. Within this command we can quickly define the top, bottom and side panels. Keyboard shortcuts are available at this point which allow us to automatically constrain the panels to the frame. When we are happy, we click the green tick to validate the design. At this point, it will create all the panel parts in our frame assembly, as well as all the constraints. Now to define the material we wish to use. We simply drag and drop from our Swood material library. Here we use a 19mm plywood. Now we save it and close the file. The mitre frame can now act as the template for any mitered frames or cabinets I wish to create going forward. I simply right click and create a copy of the frame and I now have a duplicate I can modify without changing the original. I'm going to create a new project by duplicating a similar frame. This one just has some additional chamfering on the front edge. Now to add some more detail, we can drag and drop a back panel on the frame from the Swood box library. It automatically positions itself offset from the back of the frame and if we hide the back panel, you can see it has applied the groove cuts to the surrounding panels. Now to insert some fittings. We use the insert connectors between two components tool. This will automatically detect where the panels meet each other. We then just select the type of connector we want to use. This connector has been built with a configurator where we can start to control the initial offset and spacing between instances. Now the feature has been completed, we can see the connectors added to the model as well as the appropriate cutouts in the panel. At this stage, we now decide that we would like to make our frame out of a different material. No problem. We can go to our Swood Materials library and drag and drop a different material on. In this case, a 22mm thick walnut panel. The thickness was 19mm before. 
As you can see, all the fixing positions update to suit. Because we have changed to a real wood, grain direction has now become important. We can modify the grain direction by editing the panel. For cutting purposes, we can also include stock extension on any panel, which will be useful for our reports and cut lists. Now back to the wood box library. We'll drag in the dividers. The volume for the dividers has been automatically detected and a configurator has been launched where we can control how many dividers we want and how they are spaced across the volume. Next, we'll drag in the draw fronts. We now have three volumes we can apply this to. I'll drop it on the left hand side. My configurator for the draw fronts launches and I can again define how many draw fronts I want, whether I want the draw fronts to be of equal size, what gaps I want between the draw fronts and the offset of the drawers from the surrounding panels. We'll now open the draw fronts in their own window and carry on working. As you can see, the draw fronts are made from MDF and have an edge banding applied. If we wanted to change the edge band, it's just a case of dragging them on from the library. Here we'll choose a white one millimeter and you can see the model change, or we could choose an oak six millimeter chamfered. We'll actually go back to oak two millimeters. Next, we'll change the material of the draw fronts. In this case, we'll use a laminate. As you can see, we are given the choice to apply the laminate to one or both sides of our panel. As I apply the laminate, you can see the thickness of the panel change to suit. Next, we'll drag in some handles. You will see the handles have been added to the design as well as the fixing holes. Switching back to the main assembly, you can see everything updates nicely. On the right hand side, we will drag in a front. Opening this in its own window, you can see it's made up of multiple materials. Going into the edit panels command, we can see all the materials and stock sizes that make up the front. These will be output to the report once the project is complete. In the center of our frame, we will add some glass shelves. Again, we have a configurator where we can choose our spacing and quantity of shelves. We'll then add some wooden legs. We'll also add some Blum hinges where we can control the amount of hinges and various other parameters. And of course, it creates the cutouts for the hinges for us. On the right hand side, we'll add some draw boxes where we can control the size of the box based on the draw front. We simply select a reference such as a face or vertex to define the volume. At this point, our design is finished, so let's create a report. By clicking Swood Design Reporting, lots of the documentation is automatically generated. For example, we will see a cut export, the stock list, the hardware lists, the CNC programs, the costing lists, and so on. From our report, in the top window, we have the full assembly. If we click on a component, it highlights in the top view and is shown isolated in the bottom view, making it extremely easy to identify. Next, we look at the saw cut export. We have a PDF export, which shows the hardware and the labels for the panel and so on. The HTML document collates all of our report information into an interactive document, which can be viewed in a web browser. The Home tab gives us a simple overview of our project. The Views tab allows us to see our 2D views. The Stocks tab gives us access to views of all the panels with key information such as size, grain direction and whether edge bands are required or if they are laminated. 
The Hardware tab gives us access to the hardware used in our project, complete with name, supplier, quantity and cost. The Programs tab gives us information regarding the CNC programs that have been generated. Clicking on the link gives us access to the program. This program has been generated with a G-code post processor. We can also access the labels with barcodes that are generated for each panel for easy identification. The Summary tab gives us the bill of materials with all the information about costing. So we have panel costs, hardware costs, machining costs and so on. Finally, we have the Messages tab. This could be used for communication to the shop floor for additional manufacturing information. We'll now move on to Swood Cam and look at how we can generate the program for the left panel. Swood Cam tools are accessed from a tab in the left pane. The first thing we need to do is select the machine that we're going to use. Here we will use a G-code post processor, but others are available such as HOMAG, BSA and so on. Now we have selected our machine and we see a representation of the machine in the graphics area. We can now start to manage the work table. I've chosen to use small vacuums and the beams and suction cups have been placed in the most optimised way. In the task pane, we have our tools available to select. We can define our tooling by simply editing the parameters of the tooling. We can also define aggregates. Here we are looking at the drilling head. Again, this is fully customizable. We also have the ability to create our machining strategies. In order to create the program, we can start dragging our machining strategies into the graphics area. These will automatically detect the grooves, drillings and facing operations based on how we set up the strategies. So the drilling strategy has picked up all the holes, the groove strategy has picked up the groove and the facing strategy has picked up on the chamfered faces. We can easily simulate the program to verify the program is behaving as expected. So very quickly we have generated our program and we can encode the program at the click of a button. One of the key advantages when using SWOOD is design change. Here we switch back to the top level assembly and modify the frame size. We change the depth of the frame and obviously the frame size will change but with the intelligence we have built in all the components update to suit such as the depth of the drawers and positions. Also, the amount of connectors recalculate based on the configurator tool parameters. Not only that, if we switch back to the panel, you will see there is an associativity between the model and the CAM program. As you can see, the positions of the vacuums have changed. And if we run the simulation, we can see the new holes have been recognized and the trajectories for the grooves and chamfer cuts have also been updated. As you can see, SWOOD allows us to significantly increase the speed of furniture design, as well as automatically generate reports such as cut lists and costings, as well as the CNC programs for manufacture, making it a great solution for anyone in the furniture industry. Mm -hmm.